All right, so here we go. We're going to solve some equations. So our goal here is that we want to be able to solve equations using properties of equality. What does that mean? It means you got to solve the equations. There you go. <clears throat> Anyways, um, let's look at the single step equalities. I'm going to let these play because you should know how to already do single step equalities. I mean, no offense, this is now taught in middle school at sixth grade. So a plus seven, we need to subtract, get it negative 12. Subtract nine, we need to add, get 24. Multiplying, we need to multiply, I'm sorry, divide <coughs> to get negative eight. And then when we're dividing, we need to multiply to get 42. So y'all should know that. If you don't, and I would ask questions during class because, and then you're gonna scare the heck out of me, but no, ask questions. Uh, but I do wanna make note of like, this question right here was like on the, 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 um, the word problem. I would like you to make sure that you, or the SAT problem the other day. Make sure you realize that, like, say S squared of 2 means S times the square root of 2, which means you're supposed to take the opposite of multiplying, which would be to divide, to solve. Or if you saw a symbol like this, pi, pi is a number. So that means we need to divide to get the answer. Now, admittedly, you could use a calculator and find the, 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 that's all, folks. Now, anyways, uh, you could find the decimal answer, but, you know, right now, that's good. All right, so let's look at multi-step equations. Uh, and again, these are things that you should know. So like, look at a two-step equation. What do you need to do? You need to, say, subtract five. The opposite of a plus, five is subtract, and then we're gonna divide. Now, why do I do that? Read the question, or read the problem. Three times x plus five equals 26. So notice how I said that. I had to multiply by three and then add five. We're doing inverse operations, so we're going to do the opposite, which would mean subtract 5, and then you can divide by 3 to get the answer of 7. <clears throat> notice here how I do the fraction one. Uh, notice that I multiply, then divide. So I like to take fractions as two steps, and I multiply first, multiply by the denominator, and then divide by the numerator. So notice my first step was to add 4 to get rid of the plus minus, and then I multiply by 3 and added, I'm sorry, and divided by 2. Oh, let's increase the difficulty level. All right. What happens if there's a negative in here? What I used to always get was that people would try to say, oh, that's a negative 5 and a negative 8. No. And I say, nay, nay. That is a negative for one of them. So we need to multiply. See, notice here I'm multiplying by the denominator. That's a multiply symbol. And then I'm going to divide by negative 5. Now, I didn't have a stylus when I was writing all this, so if my handwriting is a little bit off, it's because, well, I'm trying to use my finger the whole time, that gets kind of tiring. But anyways, so I divided to get an answer of negative 16. Again, fairly simple, shouldn't be that difficult. <clears throat> what happens if there's two x's? Well, we got to combine like terms first. So let's combine like terms, the 10 plus the 3x to get 13x. Notice it's not subtracting because you only do the opposites inverse when you cross over the equal sign. So 10 plus 3 is 13. I'm not gonna do anything with the seven yet. Now I've got it to where it's a two-step equation. So I gotta subtract and then I got to divide. So you can see there, subtracting, then dividing. Okay, so let's look at the next type of problem here. I had to take a little bit of pause, so if I sound a little disjointed or what the heck, it's because I had to kind of pause, and so I'm recontinuing. Didn't know I could do that. Oh, now you do. Know. All right, so here's another problem. Notice this time I have parentheses. Okay, so my idea, here we go again. My idea here is that I want to do the parentheses first. How do I take care of the parentheses? You should hopefully be able to remember that that is multiplying, distributive property. So I need to say 3 times 4 is 12x, and 3 times negative 2 is minus 6. Well, so much for me thinking I had missed the bells. I guess I hadn't. <clears throat> Equal 6. Now I can combine like terms. Negative 10 plus 12 is 2. Then I can do the opposite of the minus 6, and then I can divide. So notice how we kind of, if you follow these steps, it makes it really easy. For those of you that thought solving equations was complicated, you know, kind of stick to the step-by-steps. Take care of the parentheses. Combine like terms, add or subtract, and then divide. All right, so here's the next problem. 
Again, notice this is a little bit longer, and you're going to see a lot longer of these. So you got this 5 parentheses x plus 3, 2 parentheses 1 minus x equals 14. And again, I'm going to distribute 5 to the first parentheses and 2 times the second parentheses. So notice, make sure that you're multiplying, and then you can combine your like terms. This time, I've got two different like terms to combine. I combine the x's, and then I can combine the 15 into 2. I like to take care of all of those before I move on to like worrying about do I add or subtract. So like try to take care of one side completely. Get it down to a variable and a number, then worry about say the left side or something like that. So I always try to make sure like I combine everything first, then I can worry about subtracting, adding, subtracting, and then dividing. So here I'm going to subtract, then divide to get my final answer. So you can kind of see here how these work. Uh, you know, it's not too complicated. They're fairly easy problems, I think, but as long as we're sticking to it. Again, notice parentheses, combining, adding, subtracting, then dividing. So what happens, though, if I have variables on both sides? Oh, no, what shall we do? Well, here's what I do. I always say this, just to keep it simple. I don't even worry about who, which number is bigger, moving, and stuff like that. I go this. Variables to the left, numbers to the right. Now, since this is crossing an equal sign, oops, I'm going the wrong way. Since this is crossing an equal sign, I will change that 3x to a minus 3x. And then I will say that's variables to the left. So that's me moving the 3x to the left side. It's joining the 8. A went to be with 8. Please let me be with 8. But there's, so they're going to subtract. So that gives me 5x. Then I'm going to move the, the 5 to the right, to the right side of the equal sign. So that plus 5 will become a minus 5. So now I have negative 35 minus 5, which is negative 40. So again, you kind of read that as two, two minuses, two negatives, whatever you want to think of it as, you're going to add them, and they're going to say negative. Then you can divide. So you're already taking care of the add subtract step uh, in one shot. Divide, and there you have your answer. Let's look at another example. So here I've got 13x equals 16 minus, uh, well, you can see it. Okay, so notice here, I'm moving the 14x over, I'm subtracting the 16, and then I can divide. So it was, again, I'm not worried about which number is bigger, which one's smaller, or anything like that. I just always say variables to the left, numbers to the right. Keeps it nice and simple, doesn't kind of confuse you and make you think about extra steps. So here's an example, of the most difficult example I'm going to give you. Okay, so here we have, oh, there's a parentheses here. Now, what happens here a lot is that I'll get 4x minus x, but then you won't do anything with the 5. That minus has to be distributed to both. So notice here, I'm saying that's a negative 1, and I'm distributing it to both. So now I have 4x minus 1x, but negative 1 times a negative 5 becomes positive 5. And then I have 2x e plus 9, or times 9, 2 times 9 is 18, 4 minus 1. So notice I combine my like terms. Ah! That's not what I meant to do. Let's try that again. So I combine my like terms. 4 minus 1 is 3x, plus 5 equals 2x, plus 18. Then I'm going to move the 2x over. 3 minus 2 is 1x. And then I'm going to subtract 5 to get 13. Um, since it's 1x, I don't really have to divide. So I can leave it like that. x equals 13, and I'm done. And this is multi-step. This is basically solving equations. I mean, like I said, Previously in Algebra 1, we would have taken like two, three different types of notes, spread this out over a week. We're going to do this in like one to two days, okay? I will make another video about literal equations, and we'll talk about those more later. But that's it. Short, simple, to the point. If you have questions, make sure you ask, because Thursday, or you'll be able to ask one day, but I might be absent the next. So anyways, make sure you ask. Thank you so much for your time. Y'all have been a great audience, and y'all have been a great class. Keep it up.